Hi, this is Arthur Robinson Jr. I am the creator of PowerfulInterviews.com. I am the creator of Audio Secrets Training Event. Dot com. I want to welcome each and every one of you to this phenomenal video. In this interview, you're going to experience life-changing information that you will not find anywhere else. I have secured an incredible interview with a great friend of mine, international speaker, best-selling author, the billionaire Ziad Abdenor. Ziad Abdenor, he is a financier, he is an active investor, and his company, Black Hawks Incorporated is a private equity company. And private equity companies, they buy and they invest in other companies for scalability and high growth mode. His book basically is a bestseller and he is the author of his phenomenal book which is called Economic Warfare. So in this interview, you're gonna hear exclusively how Zia Abdenor invests in scalable companies. He also talks about how successful entrepreneurs have rebels with a cause and rebels without a cause. Zia Abdenor, he also breaks down layman's terms about you have to be impactful if you want to make a major impact in other people's lives. And also in this interview, Ziad Abdenor, he breaks down layman's terms about you have to master yourself and surround yourself around phenomenal people if you want to grow your business and if you want to build massive wealth and much, much more. So you know what that means by building massive wealth. That means, that's right, more money is coming into your cash register. So right about now, go get your pen and your pad, sit back and relax and write down some notes. In this interview that I'm going to reveal to each and every one of you with my great friend, international speaker, best-selling author, the billionaire, Ziad Abdenor. This interview, it will change your life. So check it out. Today, I have a wonderful person on the call, and he's a great friend of mine. His name is Ziad Abdenor. And for those that don't know Ziad, let me explain to each and every one of you about this incredible, phenomenal man. Ziad Abdenor is a Wall Street financier, author, activist, lobbyist, oil and gas trader, and president and CEO of Black Hawk Partners Incorporated, a New York-based private equity family office that focuses on originating, structuring, advising, and acting as an equity investor in management-led buyouts, strategic minority equity investments, equity private placements, consolidations, buildups, and growth capital financing in companies and projects based both in the U.S. and emerging markets in the trading of key physical commodities. Since 1985, Mr. Aldenor has been involved in over 125 transactions worth an aggregate over $10 billion in the investment banking, high-yield bond, and distressed debt markets, and has been widely recognized for playing an intricate role in those three key market sectors. He is the best-selling author of his phenomenal book, Economic Warfare, Secrets of Wealth Creation in the Age of Welfare Politics, and that is an awesome, impressive resume. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome the one, the only, the powerful Ziap Abdenor to the show. How are you doing, Arthur? Well, I'm doing great. It's getting better each and every single day. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. To everyone that's listening on this show, I highly recommend go and get your pen in your pad right now. My great friend Zia Abdenor is going to break down layman's terms on how to build wealth. Is that correct, Zia? Uh, absolutely. Now, what I'd like to know, and can you explain to the listeners in layman's terms, who is the phenomenal Zia Abdenor? How long have you been in your powerful industry, and what is your expertise? Well, number one, it's not a question of being phenomenal. High achievers always seek more, so you never reach the pinnacle. It's always going further. Uh, that's my philosophy in life. 
but never satisfied, always push the envelope for higher and higher grounds. Uh, it's all about empowering people. Uh, that's really the message. I'm not doing it for myself. Of course, I benefit from the process. I'm doing it to empower more people. The more people I empower, the more everybody benefits. It has got to be a win-win for all. It's not a zero-sum game. Unfortunately, a lot of people who reach the heights of power, for them it's a zero-sum game. They win, you lose. Can't do that. I learned this a long time ago, and it has to be a win-win for all. Uh, all winners think like this, uh, and all losers try to get corners. Um, you know, this is my philosophy in life. Um, and there's a lot to do. Uh, that's pretty much my short answer. Mm. Now, I've seen a phenomenal video that you did, and you were talking about rebels with a cause and rebels without a cause. Can you explain that to the listeners so they fully understand? What exactly did you mean by rebels with a cause? Rebels with a cause are people who have uh, a purpose in life, uh, and they are basically acting and moving towards that purpose. And these are the guys who succeed a lot because they have a purpose. They know where they're going. They have a path. Rebels without a cause self-destruct. They are loose cannon. They're going nowhere. Uh, they're pretty dangerous. And they can be very harmful. Big difference. Huge difference. When you're moving towards a purpose, a goal, and when you're moving aimlessly in life, unfortunately, a lot of people are moving in life. You know, it's pretty much the right race for them. They're running, running, running. Running for what? Towards what? Towards accomplishing what goal? Um, sometimes you have to stop and smell the roses and see really what's around you. Why are you here? Why are you doing what you're doing? What's the purpose of your activities? Gives it meaning. Uh, you've got to have a strategy. Um, that's the key. Without a strategy, you're going nowhere. That's exactly what I mean. And I'm pretty laser-like focus in what I do. Uh, from a professional point of view, personal point of view, uh, uh, for-profit organization, non-profit organization, You've got to be impactful, and to be impactful, you have to know what you're doing first. You have to know yourself. Look, if you really want to be master of the game, first you have to be master of yourself, not master of people, master of yourself. If you're a master of yourself, uh, things will be pretty good. Mm. From your experience, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a lot of a lot to think this morning. You know, at the end of the day. It's a lot about philosophy and psychology. Very successful people are not, you know, just born. They just go through very tough times. They learn from their failures, and they never break. They bend. They never break. As they say, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. And uh, they refine their purpose, uh, you know, as they go along. <clears throat> they fine-tune it. They refine it. And they work with the right people around them. So all the people's business. <laughs> You've got to surround yourself with the best people, the positive. I stay away from negative people all the time. No matter how smart they are, no matter how rich they are, no matter how powerful that they are, smart uh, uh, people who are negative uh, will pull you down. And you don't need that. Life is too short. Mm. So who you spend time with and who you listen to, that's who you're going to become. <laughs> well, you know, let me tell you something. Uh, you are the average of the five closest people who are to you in your life. So you better pick up your very close friends very carefully. Because these are the people you interact with the most, and you become the average. So if they are really of a high caliber, they're going to, you know, 
they're going to have a good impact on you. You know, learn a lot. And you learn from them, they learn from you. And if you spend your time with losers, you're going to become a loser. Uh, it's people. It's all people. It's all about people. Whether I'm backing companies, I'm backing projects, I am um, uh, building businesses, uh, the first thing I look for is the people. Their integrity, their purpose, their focus, their uh, you know commitment, uh, and that's pretty much it. All the rest will solve itself if you have the right people. At the end of the day, if you if I'm back in company with top notch management team, A team with an okay so so kind of uh, service or product, it's much better than a company with a so so management team and with a great product. The product will not sell itself. It's all about execution. Who's going to execute? Who's behind it? Whether you're backing a project, an idea, a politician, anything. It applies everywhere. In the political sphere, in the business world. Who are those people? Have you done your homework? Have you done your due diligence? Do you really know them? Can you really read between the lines? Can you uh, differentiate between the rhetoric and the real? You are experiencing a life-changing, powerful interview, and you are hearing it first from Arthur Robinson Jr.'s PowerfulInterviews.com. The, uh, from your own experience, what do billionaires and millionaires do on a consistent, regular basis that, unfortunately, broke entrepreneurs just don't do? I think, number one, uh, we work harder. Believe it or not, uh, it's never enough. I mean, for me, I have no weekends. It's 24-7, weekends included. Not because I have to do it, but because I like doing it. I like doing what I'm doing. When people tell me, Ziad, when are you going to retire? I mean, I them, retire from what? Retire from having fun? I'm having a blast doing what I'm doing. Retire what? To go and play golf all, year, all day long? I'll be bored after two days. You know, so I like what I'm doing, and I don't think I'll ever retire. It's not for the money. It's for the passion. It's for, you know, the difference you're making. So number one, we work harder. Uh, we work with a passion. We're very passionate. Number two, uh, we, surround, we are a very good judge of people. Uh, you don't get there without really being a good judge of people, being able to size up people very quickly. Uh, some of my colleagues, my partners tell me when it comes to sizing up people, it's like you're on steroids. I mean, you are so quick on that. Yes, I can read the bullshit a thousand miles away. Mm. And there's so much bullshit out there. Uh, the real from the, you know, bullshit. So uh, I, I think a lot of people cannot, uh, I mean, who don't get it there. I mean, usually they don't get to the top because there's something that happened because of someone in their life that didn't allow them to get there. So people is, people is extremely important. Third, you know, in the wealth creation business and the business building business, uh, you know, in the deal business, the most important uh, element, believe it or not, uh, the, the element that really breaks all the deals, that breaks everything, all the trust, is ego. You have to manage your ego. A lot of people don't. Uh, they cannot. Their ego is out of control. Uh, what kills deals, what kills dreams, is ego. Uh, it's good to have an ego, but it has to be channeled right. You cannot be misplaced ego. You know, I mean, my father used to tell me all the time when I was growing up, be very arrogant with the mighty and powerful and be very nice with everybody else, which is exactly the reverse of what 99% of the people do. They're very arrogant with the simple, nice people, and they suck up to the mighty and the powerful. Wow. And this is why they don't get their respect. Uh, because believe me, the mighty and the powerful, you know, they don't respect everybody. They respect, I mean, you have to earn their respect. So, 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 so they don't get their respect, and they end up, you know, uh, leading a miserable life. So you really have to play. Look, uh, psychology, uh, finance, build, building businesses, creating wealth is more is very much about psychology. 
uh, how you understand people, how you understand situations, how you deal with them, how you manage your ego, how you manage your stress. A lot of people cannot manage their stress. They crumble under stress. They start taking drugs, alcohol. They start resorting to some crazy stuff. And then they real, and then they uh, it affects their health, their well-being, their sound uh, reasoning, their sound thinking. And that's what happens. Managing your stress, managing your ego, choosing the right people, working hard with integrity, having a purpose. I mean, it adds up. And all these things really, I mean, you don't, I don't think you learn these things in school, in college. I mean, or even your parents or the principals will tell you this. They'll tell you maybe bits and pieces, but unless you've been through that yourself, unless you've absolutely experienced that, witnessed that, and failed, I failed, I failed much more than I succeeded. But people talk about my successes, but people don't know about the failures the disappointments, the deceptions I had to go through, which made me stronger and learn to avoid. As long as you're learning from your mistakes, that's fine. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't learn. They keep doing the same mistake again and again and again. It, 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 uh, it becomes a bad habit. And you know what? It's very difficult to change bad habits, but you have to really make the extra effort to change them. Because once you're on the right track with good habits, it keeps there. It becomes a routine. It becomes like you wake up every day, you have to brush your teeth, you have to take a shower, you have to do this and that. Well, the same thing. When you stop, when you stop the, you know, practicing these good habits, you fall into the bad habits, and which becomes a cycle, an irreversible cycle, which becomes very self-destructive. And here you go. And you're in, uh, you're in a tough situation. Uh, Money-wise, personal-wise, relationship-wise, business-wise, everything. Mm. Wow. This is an incredible interview, and I appreciate you coming on my show today. No problem. Zia, can you explain to the listeners what is the best advice that you have ever received? Well, be true to yourself. Be yourself. Mm. A lot of people live their lives... Uh, they're not true to themselves. They want to be somebody else. So there's a lot of lying and cheating and uh, posing for this and that. Be yourself. Because you can only excel if you fully use your DNA. You know, each one of us is born with a certain DNA, with certain qualities and certain defaults. No one is perfect. No one. Everybody has qualities. Everybody has the fact, you know, defaults, failings, whatever. So you're going to have to basically use, know your qualities best and excel using your qualities, not trying to figure out how to improve your feelings. That's important too. But mostly you really have to, you know, each one of us is dealt with a certain number of cards, aces, kings, etc. You have to use your cards to the best. These are the cards I was born with, I'm dealt with. I'm going to use them to the maximum. So you have to be yourself. You have to be true to yourself. Uh, you know, even if you're going to create along the way some enemies, you know, mm -hmm. if you don't stand, like uh, Western Churchill used to say, if you don't stand for anything in life, you know what? You're not going to have enemies, but who cares? At the end of the day, you have to be impactful. You're going to have enemies no matter what you do, no matter what you say, and you're going to have friends. You just hope that your friends are going to be uh, much more than your enemies, and your enemies will respect you and understand what you stand for, even if they disagree with you. At the end of the day, if two people agree on everything, one of them is not needed. You are experiencing a life-changing, powerful interview, and you are hearing it first from Arthur Robinson Jr.'s PowerfulInterviews.com. Zia, what was the epiphany for you to build your own wealth for you and your family? Well, you know, money is not about acquiring things. It's not about, you know what, I got a new car, fancy car, or a house, or a plane, or a yacht, or, or, or so some material things. No. 
If you, if you want to acquire money because of that, you're not going to acquire much money, and it has no purpose. You know, remember the purpose thing we talked about before. Money is about freedom. Money for me is about freedom. The more money we acquire, the freer you're going to become. The more you're going to become an independent thinker, and you will not have to take crap from no one. When you have money, you don't, you don't have to take crap from no one. No boss, no this, no that. You're free to do and think whatever you want. And you reach a point whereby you have perfected yourself, you're a free thinker, and now you're going to start to teach other people how to get there uh, and how to be like this. There's nothing, nothing more important than freedom. Nothing. Uh, and uh, it's not easy to become free because if you don't have the money, you're subject to, you know, this group, this boss, this ideology. Sometimes you're stuck in a relationship which you cannot get out of because you don't have the money to get out of. Sometimes you're stuck in a business, in a company, in a job which you hate, you literally hate, but you cannot leave that job because they're paying you a paycheck and you need that paycheck to pay the bills for yourself, your family. So you're stuck. You have shackles. To liberate yourself from the shackles, whether, uh, you know, you know, in, in, sometimes shackles uh, in your mind, imaginary shackles, sometimes for real. You really have to acquire, you really have to acquire wealth. So for me, really acquiring wealth is about freedom. I'm a very opinionated guy. I'm a very independent guy, you know, uh, and I like my freedom. And this is really an incentive for me to do that. Uh, so your brain can be your worst enemy in regards to building wealth. I'm sorry, repeat that. I can do it. Your brain can be your worst enemy in regards oh, yeah. to building wealth. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. The way you think, the way you think, your attitude. Look, they, like they say, you know, success is ninety percent attitude, and hard work is attitude. It's not. I mean, attitude. Look. I'm not saying, you know what, there's a difference between confidence and arrogance, okay? Arrogance is bad. Confidence is good. Be confident. Learn. Uh, you know, swallow your ego. Manage your ego. Manage your stress. Understand people. Put yourself in their shoes. Make it a win-win situation. Stay away from negative people. You know, I mean, it's an attitude. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a philosophy. Uh, build your own philosophy in life. Have a purpose. A lot of people don't. Don't do any of what I'm telling you right now. And then they wonder why they're stuck in their job, why they're stuck in a relationship, why they're stuck in a position here and there. Well, because they're not doing anything. They don't know where they're going. They're not making any effort about it. Things don't happen just by themselves. Things don't happen because they went to church and they prayed Jesus Christ for things to change. And then, oh, it still didn't change. Well, it's not. Jesus Christ is not going to deal with that. You're going to have to help yourself. You're going to have to sit down, start on a clean slate, turn the page. Now, this is a new white page, new chapter. I want to be like this. I'm going to work towards that. I'm going to better, better choose my friends, my inner circle, my people. I want to focus what I'm going to do. It's all attitude. It's your brain, yes. It's the brain, yes. It doesn't, things don't happen like that. There's no coincidence. Or accident. Yes, I believe in luck to a certain extent, coincidence to a certain extent, but it doesn't shape your life. Luck helps if you're ready and prepared and you have luck on top of it. Awesome. But you should not rely on that or rely on some outside force that's going to come and rescue you. Like all these guys now who vote for this, for the government, they rely on the government uh, to really bail them out. They rely on the government to find them jobs. They rely on the government. You cannot rely on people. Each one of us should be self-reliant because at the end of the day, nobody cares about you. But you have to really, I mean, a lot of people care about you, but not the way you should care about yourself. If you care, about, if you care and take care of yourself, things will be great. A lot of people rely on handouts. You can't rely on handouts and help and support 
and they become envious or jealous of the people who made it. It's like why? It's like they want to pull them down so that they be so that they're all the same. Well, you know what? I don't believe in in um, in equality. It doesn't exist. It's only in your mind. People are not born equal, don't live equal, and don't die equal. Not everybody can go, for example, and live on Fifth Avenue and drive the Bentley because there isn't enough room for that. Very simple. <laughs> There's enough room for 7 billion people to live like that, you know. So at the end of the day, it is a meritocracy, you know. May the best win. Yes, Charles Darwin, survival of the fittest. Yes, meritocracy. And you know what? It's good. And you know what, no matter who you think you are, there's always somebody who's going to be smarter than you, more handsome than you, more powerful than you, richer than you. So you can't go and be bitter about it. Oh, you know, my life. No, you can't compare yourself to people. You have to compare yourself to your own self. Where was I a year ago? I'm much better off now. Where was I five years ago? I'm much better off now. I'm going in the right direction. All these guys who are more successful than you, richer, more powerful, don't be envious from them. Try to get closer to them. Learn from them. Be in their circle. You remember what I told you? You are the average of your five closest friends. So if you have as friends now five super successful, nice, friendly billionaires, think about how successful you're going to be and how the impact is going to have on you versus going with five losers around you and then bitching and moaning about the guys who made it. Mm. And that's the problem we have in this country today. You have the haves and the have-nots, and the have-nots, not all of them, but a big part of them, are bitching and moaning about the haves and want to bring the haves down. If you bring the haves down, you will never be, uh, be, have an opportunity to be part of that group because you have brought everybody down. No one wins. You know what? Now it becomes a zero sum game, which is exactly a no no. No one wins. It has never it can never be a zero sum game. It has to be a win win. You know, I mean these are basic things that people forget, disregard, don't pay attention to, and then they and then they they stuck in their lives and see, what have I done? And then it's too late. Because it becomes a bad habit. It's difficult to get out of a bad habit. You're stuck in it and uh, the cycle goes on. You are experiencing a life-changing, powerful interview, and you are hearing it first from Arthur Robinson Jr.'s PowerfulInterviews.com. Zia, what is the difference between rich versus wealthy? (laughs) Funny, funny you say that. Well, I'm going to give you a very simple example, okay? And then you'll understand. Okay. Uh, Rich is... Something you say, for example, like let's go to the let's go to the Bahamas or let's go to a grand tour of the Mediterranean. That's rich. Wealthy is let's go to the Bahamas or a grand tour of the Mediterranean now, anytime. Mm. You have wealthy people that control their time. The most important commodity is time. It's not money. Wealthy people control their time. They can do whatever they want whenever they want. Rich people, they can do uh, whatever they want, maybe, but not whenever they want because they have constraints. The difference is the time. Most important commodity is time. Look, let me say something. If you make a ton of money and you lose it, you can make it again. But if you lose time, you cannot make it again. Nobody can do it again. Not the rich, not the powerful, not the mightiest people in the world. Time is gone. You are one time 30 years old, one time 40 years old, one time 50 years old. You cannot buy time. You cannot, you cannot t- t- turn back the clock. You cannot do that. That's it. So the wealthy control their time better. 